In this video, we are taking a look at the tricky winter storm that will impact a good chunk of the U.S. The National Weather Service has already begun issuing winter storm warnings as forecast models begin to nail down the track and intensity of this thing. However, there are still a lot of moving parts and questions that we are going to try to answer so you can be as informed as possible. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. We're about to hit 300,000 subscribers here on YouTube, and we just passed over a million on TikTok. Yeah, the weather guy has a million followers on TikTok. Yeah, I didn't see that one coming either, but I am thankful that you guys are trusting me with all of your daily weathertainment needs. And then, of course, when things get serious, your source of no hype, no nonsense weather information. That's enough about me. What about you? you you've got a storm coming. Let's start talking about that right now. All right, here's a big old look at the U.S. And you can see a little bit of our storm way up here in the Pacific Northwest. If we zoom in here, you can see we've got some on and off heavy rain showers from Astoria all the way up into now Seattle. And in fact, up here in the B.C., we've got a rainfall warning where we are expecting some flooding up there. So lots of heavy rain and impacts on the west coast from this storm. Uh, but the thing we're going to focus on today is what's going to happen here in the central U.S. This is where we are expecting a potentially major storm from here all the way over onto the east coast. So this is going to be a multi-day event and it's all going to start right over here. So if you're in the pink boxes there, you are under a winter storm warning. That's going to be for six to ten inches of snow there. And I do think that these warnings and watches are going to extend down to the south and to the east. We're going to look at all the data and possibilities here on the weather models right now. All right, now we are looking at the central U.S. on the weather models here. We're going to start off with the NAM three kilometer, and we're going to look at that simulated radar, okay? If you want to keep up with the date and time, it's always going to be displayed above my head there in Eastern time. Now, let's jump right into it. Heavy snow is going to break out tonight into the early morning hours tomorrow in North Dakota and South Dakota, okay? That's going to progress from north to south into Minnesota and northern portions of Iowa by 7 a.m. early in the morning tomorrow. So this thing is booking it down to the south and just look at that motion. Okay, just I want to admire this for a second. This is pretty cool. So if you're in Iowa tomorrow morning, uh, you know, the cloud motion is going to be from south to north because this low pressure system rotates counterclockwise. The clouds are going to be going this way, but the storm is going this way. It's going to be stormception out there in Iowa. It really doesn't mean anything as to, you know, what you're going to expect. I just think it's cool. But yeah, heavy snow is going to be over the entire state there uh, by 10 p.m. tomorrow. Now, the further east you go in Iowa and like for example over here in Illinois the harder it's going to be for you to really get in on some of those uh, you know intense heavy snow bands because there is some dry air over here a lot of the heaviest snow is going to take place just north of the rain snow line as it does look like we're going to start off as a little bit of rain and maybe some mix there in Missouri portions of Kansas Arkansas and Oklahoma before we switch over to snow and then if I pull this all the way out this is as far out as the radar can go 1 p.m. Saturday uh, this is what the radar could and more than likely will look like some variation of this. It might be a little bit further west, it might be a little bit further east, but for the most part, this is what we're looking at. Everywhere in the purple and pink here, I think you can expect six to eight inches of snow with isolated pockets of 10 inches. There'll be a couple people probably here in Iowa that end up with close to a foot or more. And then everybody outside of that in the lighter blues is, you know, your two to fours, your three to sixes, stuff like that. Now, if you're south of this line down here, for example, the snow's not done for you yet, okay? So we, we can't really talk about the totals. Just know that it's probably gonna be higher than what you see right Right here. Friendly advice, if you're in the purple or the pink here, um, you probably already have one of these, but it's really nice to have in a situation like this. Uh, you probably know what I'm talking about, a snow shovel, right? You wanna be able to get the snow out of the way. And no matter where you live, something else that's just good to have that you might not have is a VPN. And that brings us to today's sponsor, NordVPN, one of the best ways to browse. You can finally browse without a trace. Unlike your internet provider, NordVPN has no obligation whatsoever to record or collect any of your your personal information. So why not keep your online data secure with an easy to use program like NordVPN? Connect with just one click or turn on auto connect for nonstop protection. You do not have to worry about your internet speed dropping because NordVPN is the fastest on the market by far. And you can connect on every single major platform, including Windows, Android, iOS, Mac OS, and Linux. Even your Android TV will support NordVPN. Now, my favorite thing about it is you can browse the internet from basically anywhere on earth, which means that if your favorite streaming service is cheaper or only available in a certain country, you can just change your virtual 
central location and bada bing bada boom baby you've done outsmarted the internet head on over to nordvpn.com slash ryan hall to get a two-year plan plus one additional month with a huge discount it is risk-free with nord's 30-day money-back guarantee and you're gonna love browsing safe and free now of course let's get back into the video all right so if you are on this side of the country and you've been watching me or you know anybody else really and you've been hearing this talk about you know oh we were it's too soon it's too soon it's too soon to tell you exactly what's going to happen and you're wondering why is it so hard why is it so hard well let me try to explain it to you while also uh, providing a little bit of a forecast here so we're looking at the east coast uh, because something that we've been not talking about a lot is th there's a big storm that's forming over here on the east coast or offshore i should say that is going to impact some people in the northeast but this thing has been completely overshadowed by our big storm out here that we've been tracking but as you can see around 2 p.m tomorrow we're going to see snow break out in maine and uh, a little bit of rain there in cape cod that will switch over to heavy snow by 7 p.m tomorrow evening okay and uh, it's probably going to put down a couple inches pretty quick before it moves out. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because uh, this forecast model, there are so many variables that it has to take into account, right? Imagine the atmosphere is a road, right? And this storm is a car. Our next storm is a car. The storm out in front of this one is a car. The storm behind this one is a car. What happens when three cars in front of you uh, kind of taps the brakes a little bit or slows down or speeds up? Over time, there's a snowball effect and every car behind that uh, also slows down or also speeds up. And the further back you get in the line the more effect that little tap on the brake has from the car that's in front that same thing happens with storms man and just the tiniest little shift in the winds the tiniest little change in temperatures uh, can make a big difference downstream in what uh, the forecast models are showing one of my favorite ways to keep track of the traffic out there all of the cars that are on our highway here is by looking at the upper levels of the atmosphere this is where you can really start to see where all of the pieces of energy are and who's slowing down who's speeding up who's doing what and the reason this storm is so hard to forecast is because there are a lot of other cars on the road and there's a lot of other pieces of energy uh, interacting with this storm that will have major impacts on its track in the future just based off of small changes so the first thing you notice here is this big tail right that comes off of our last storm we call this confluence this is one of the reasons why it's going so far south and also one of the reasons why it's holding back to the west a little while longer the natural progression for a storm is usually just to go straight towards the north pole but this one has a big finger pushing down on it keeping it down here now if you're a snow lover on the east coast over here that's kind of the perfect situation you remember yesterday i showed you the map and i talked about how this is like the perfect setup for a storm everything is just right and that's true except for one thing and it's this piece of energy right here this polar short wave that comes racing down and now we've got two swirly things swirling around each other and that happens right at the pivot point when this storm comes around to the east coast so think of this as a baseball and then this uh, polar short wave up here as a baseball bat the baseball bat's going to come down and kind of knock the baseball out of the park and if you've ever played baseball you know just a slight centimeter difference on where that ball hits the bat will make a dramatic difference in where the ball lands in the outfield or which direction it goes. That's the same kind of intricacies we're talking about here, just on a much larger scale. All right, I know what you're thinking, okay? Ryan, you're getting way too nerdy on me. I just wanna know if it's gonna snow, man. Okay, let's go down to the surface and look at the latest Euro model. There's our surface low pressure system kind of forming and doing all kinds of weird things down here, which is once again, why we're not very certain about it. And then around 4 p.m. on Sunday, this is when things get really interesting. According to the latest Euro, uh, we're going to see snow break out through a lot of Tennessee and Kentucky up through Virginia. And then on the southern side down here, we're going to see a lot of uh, ice and freezing rain. So something to keep in mind here is that this storm came out of the north, right? So it's bringing a lot of cold air with it. That's why we're expecting snow all the way down here in potentially Oklahoma, Arkansas. The storm is not necessarily strong enough once it gets down here to pull down new cold air from the north. So we're working with old cold air here. Now, what happens if you bring old cold air? into Arkansas it eventually warms up right so that's why we might have a little bit of a problem here especially in the uh, Kentucky Tennessee uh, down into Mississippi Alabama and Georgia those northern areas even into the Appalachian Mountains with some rain freezing rain and sleet mixing into our snow now also all this pink that you see over here on the eastern side of the Appalachian Mountains we're gonna have this phenomenon
phenomenon called uh, cold air damming occur, uh, where we have some cooler air stuck between the mountains here. And whenever this warm, moist air works over that, the rainfall is likely going to freeze on impact in a lot of places here in extreme northwestern South Carolina into central and western North Carolina. And then once again, possibly even into Virginia and uh, portions of the Appalachian Mountain Spine here. This is potentially going to be the most concerning part of our storm, okay? This can lead to power outages. You guys know what it can lead to. An ice storm is never good. I love winter weather. I love snow, but I never want to see an ice storm. But we should know for sure tomorrow whether or not you should be concerned about this. Right now, I would say just be prepared, okay? It doesn't hurt to be a little bit extra prepared in a situation where this could happen. And then once this thing goes off to the north a little bit, the storm becomes stronger and it is able to start bringing down new cold air. So we're going to have no problem with our snow. Uh, in Ohio here in Pennsylvania. Now the problem becomes, you know, where is this surface low pressure system going to set up? Where's that rain snow line going to be, right? Because right now uh, it looks like we're going to start off as snow in Washington, D.C. and then switch over to rain and we're not going to have any snow totals. That's pretty much going to be the case for New York City as well. Uh, Boston looks like they're going to be all rain. But remember, this is going to change, okay? We still don't know uh, if this is going to go off the coast a little bit more or maybe even go a little bit further inland. Uh, this is just what the Euro shows right now. And of course, there's more than just one weather model. Here's the GFS. Okay, it looks pretty similar. But you can see if I park this to where the storm's right over Washington, D.C. here around 10 p.m. on Sunday, let's look at the model trends, okay? So yesterday with new forecast data, we were seeing that the storm was slowly moving west. So I said, if that trend continues, we might see the storm take a path like this and, you know, this area gets more snow. But if it kind of reverses, we might see it take a path like this and then this area gets more snow. Well, let's see what the trends are looking like today. Let's go back in time. Look at the last forecast. Let's look at the one before that. Hmm. Now let's go back into the future a little bit. What kind of trend is that? Are we going back this way? Yesterday we were going this way. Today we're going this way. Welcome to the world of weather models. This is why you don't trust that guy on Facebook that always talks about uh, the, the blizzard coming two weeks from now because <laughs> a lot of times a weather model will show a storm two weeks from now right here. And then the next run, there's still a storm two weeks from now but it's over here. But now we're one week away and we see it right here. The next run, it's over here. And the closer we get to the storm, the less that variant happens and the more we kind of straighten out and we figure out exactly what's going to actually happen. That's why it's important to look at model trends. Like which way are we going? How much are we swinging around? Please don't make a gif out of this, like out of context. That's, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever done. So remember, we're still a hundred hours out from this storm over here. There's going to be a lot of wavy hands going on, a lot of back and forth, but we are getting closer and closer to really nailing down what's going to happen. All right, last but not least, let's talk about the potential major impacts from this storm. We're going to go off the GFS ensembles here and take a look at who's got the best chance of seeing more than three inches of snow. And once again, just like I said yesterday, I'm very confident about the forecast there from Minnesota down into Iowa and Missouri. If you are in the reds there, you're going to get more than three inches of snow. I can promise you that. Probably a lot more than that. And then once again, right here around that pivot point where all that weird stuff's going to be happening with the warm air and the old cold air and stuff, uh, we lose our confidence, okay? We're not very confident in, in, in the fact that somebody's going to get a lot of snow over here in Tennessee or Kentucky or southern portions of Indiana. Uh, somebody could get a lot of snow over here, but we're not confident about that. Confidence is high about heavy snow in the uh, Appalachian Mountains there, of course. Uh, and then we're still around that 50 to 60% range for a lot of the Northeast as far as uh, three inches of snow or more goes. Let's look at that six inch map here and you can see confidence goes down obviously when we're talking about more snow, but there you go. You're getting hammered in the Appalachian Mountains of North Carolina. Uh, also into Northern Virginia. I know you guys are still kind of recovering from the last storm. I think this is going to be another very impactful storm for a lot of you. So places like Delaware, I think that the snow's not going to be your problem with this one. I think the winds and the heavy rain is more than likely going to be your problem uh, with maybe even some freezing rain and sleet and mixed problems as well. Now let's look at that probability of seeing more than 12 inches of snow and you can see that's all focused right over here and yeah, somebody over here is going to get way more than 12 inches of snow. We just don't know exactly where that's going to line up yet. This is a very good way of visualizing where it could happen though. And once again, the area that I'm most concerned about as far as this being a major and impactful storm is going to be uh, northeastern areas of Georgia into South Carolina, North Carolina, and southern portions 
of Virginia. Once again, don't go buy all the bread and milk just yet. However, if the models still show this tomorrow, I think unfortunately we are gonna be talking about a significant storm down here uh, with over a half an inch of ice accumulation across a very broad area. Um, and then, you know, maybe even some places that get closer to three quarters of an inch or maybe even an inch of ice, which would be a, a devastating ice storm actually, not just a bad one. So my focus is really gonna start to shift down here as we get closer to the storm. And I promise I will update you every single day on this. So please hit that like like button, subscribe, and all that good stuff so you never miss a video here, okay? As always, huge shout out to our channel members over there. If you're feeling nice and helpful today, please share this on social media. Facebook's a great place to put this kind of stuff to kind of drown out all of the misinformation and, and you know, people posting doomsday scenarios on there. If we, if we can get my videos as shared as that on Facebook, I think we could do some big, some really good stuff here. By the way, I do have a Facebook and a Twitter and Instagram and all that stuff, so if you want to follow me over there and hear from me more often, consider doing that. I'm looking forward to tweeting with you. All right. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.